Hey everyone, Sheldon here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add reinforcement metal cross pins to certain components. Basically these cross pins add additional strength to two pieces that are technically supposed to be one piece, so having them secured in place with something that's more than just super glue is better and they won't break apart as easily, if that makes sense and I actually added two reinforcement cross pins to the sliding component back here. So I'm gonna zoom in on it and show you a closer look. So looking at it just like this, you can see the two metal pins are right there and they're actually going all the way through. And if I take this out of here, you can see them on the bottom as well. So these cross pins actually go all the way through here. So it goes through this top piece right here and this bottom piece right here. So basically all I did was take the width of this and just divide it by two and just drew sort of a midline on there and transferred it right there and then just figured out how I wanted them to be spaced apart. So I'm actually gonna add a third one right there and I also just wanted to point out that the layers for this piece, so right here, are stacked up going in this direction and the layers to form this piece are stacked up in this direction. So the layers are perpendicular to each other and having cross pins like that really adds additional strength. So I'm just going to add the last one right here and show you how I do it. So. Basically, I have these metal wires that are actually flags, and you can get these from Home Depot or Amazon. People use them in their lawns to mark stuff in the ground. And I really like these a lot because the diameter of this wire is the same as a sixteenth of an inch drill, which you can see here. So. I actually used this for the hooks on my original full-size dual action hidden blade. And these flags are also nice because you don't have to have like a spool of 16 gauge wire that you have to straighten out to get, you know, really tiny cross pins. So it's just really convenient to already have them straight like this. So all I have to do is just take my calipers here and measure this piece right here. So that's 0 0.150. I'll just say it's 0 0.150, it's close enough. And I'm just gonna get my calculator right here and just type in 0.150, divide that by two, get 0 0.075. So that will be my middle. So I just need to put that on the calipers right here, just like that. Then I'm just going to take my calipers and just kind of scratch a line on here into the paper. So it's okay to do this on paper because it's not going to mess with the calipers. Now, if you're trying to scratch into a metal surface, like it's okay to do it once in a while. I have done it before, but it's not really good for your calipers. So just, you know, be careful with it. So I went ahead and just drew a line on there with a pencil too, just so you can see it for the video. But basically for that line right there, I just took this distance from the middle of this pin to the middle of that one and just transferred it over to here. So like that to there. And I just got that middle one there by measuring from here to here and just dividing that by two, just like I did for these. And that's how I got that pin distance correct for the middle one right there. So now I'm just gonna drill the hole. Now I have one of these hand drill things right here. It's a very nice tool, um, relatively cheap too, actually. It just comes in handy because you don't have to like use a power drill and you don't have to twist it with your fingers because I used to just twist it with my fingers back in the day for tiny pieces like this because if you put it in a power drill it's just too fast and it just 
you know messes up the paper really quick so this is really nice to have and if you don't have one you can still just you know use your fingers if you have patience and just go carefully and keep making sure it is square you know perpendicular it's not going in there like that so what I like to do is just take the tip of my exacto knife and just put it where those lines intersect and just kind of twist it a little bit and that'll give it an area to get started with when you actually put the drill in there. There it is, right there. It's kind of hard to see, but yeah. And now you just take whatever size drill you need, which is based on what cross pin size you need too. In my case, it's a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm just gonna put it in here. And I'm just gonna get it started here. And you can see what I'm doing as time goes on. So I just need to make sure it stays perpendicular and I keep checking this direction in this direction and if I get it right at first it'll be a lot easier to line up throughout if that makes sense so change the camera angle a little bit and I have these post-it notes which it just happens to be the right height to get this Perfect. I don't know how that happened, but it's nice. So I'm just gonna try to hold it in place and just twist it. And sometimes the layers start to split, which you can see right there. So I just take the thin super glue, which you can see there's a link to it in the description and I like to just put it right here you got to be careful with it because it's thin and it likes to just spill everywhere yeah got a little bit of excess Obviously watch your finger on the other side. Just use something I like to call common sense. It's hard to come by nowadays. All right, so that went all the way through and you can see the layers want to split a little bit again. So just a little bit more thin super glue and then some pliers, just like this and you just put the drill through there again usually I like to do it from one side like this and then Take it out and then going through the other side. And then just take like a file and knock off the burrs. So I have the wire here and I'm just gonna take some sandpaper, rough it up a little bit so the glue will bond better. And then I'm just gonna cut off a little piece, make it a little longer than I need it to be. And just hold it so it doesn't fly off somewhere. 
naturally the other one falls on the ground, but that's okay. So I have my cross pin right here and I'm just gonna take some medium viscosity super glue and basically just put it inside the hole and let that flow down and then put the cross pin in there and then just trim off as much as you can like this and I'm just gonna file that flat and I like to use a bigger file like this instead of something like this because this is more coarse and it just removes the material faster so just try my best to only remove the metal and not like hold it like that to where it's filing the paper down too so you can hear when it's filing the paper and you can also feel it All right, so there it is right now. And I actually just took a file like this and basically went over it right here like that just to get that perfectly 90 degrees and also right there, just like that. So obviously it still needs a little bit of polishing, but the whole thing is very strong now and this piece won't just break off. So it still fits in here just like it should and moves relatively smoothly. Obviously, once it gets polished, everything will work to its full potential. But, you know, it's just a paper prototype that I'm working on just so I can make parts for it out of metal. So obviously this doesn't need to be perfect. I just want it to be super durable and I'm testing out a lot of my new paper crafting techniques and I want to show it to you guys. So that's what I'm doing. So that's just how I like to add reinforcement pins, but there are other ways to do it. That's not necessarily the correct way to do it. It's just how I do it. So you can see everything fits together and it's coming together pretty quickly actually. And you can see here that I've got some paper pieces ready to make the locks. So it's coming together and once the base is finished, I mean, it basically is aside from these little cylinders there, it'll be easier to measure and start making out of metal. So you'll be seeing some videos on that pretty soon and you're going to see them on Patreon first, so then they'll go over to YouTube. So make sure you're looking out for that, and I'd really appreciate your support. I'm also going to be live streaming on Twitch pretty soon, so be looking out for that. You can see some paper crafting stuff. I actually got a mobile hotspot, so I'll be able to have uninterrupted internet, so that'll be nice. Yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below or in a personal message. And be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see all the latest updates. And I'll see you guys in the next video.